13, 2, we read in Scripture about the early church gathering together for the purpose of ministering unto the Lord. It was in this atmosphere that the Holy Spirit manifested Himself and gave them His plan for the future of the church. On today's program, I will be teaching a message entitled, Why We Worship. I invite you to join me now. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. I came up here last night to prepare for today's message and just wait on the Lord, and sometimes it just comes real clear what you're supposed to do, and other times it's not quite as clear. And so I got up early this morning and began to read and pray and just worship the Lord. And, and I'll be honest with you, I really feel like today we need to take time to minister to the Lord. And you say, Pastor, what do you mean minister to the Lord? Today's a time whenever we're not looking so much for us just to come and say, Lord, I need you to do this, I need you to do this, I need you to do this, I need you to do this and this and this, and when you get through with that stuff, I need you to start taking care of this stuff. I want us today to think of it this way, and that is it's a time for us to just return our thanksgiving unto God, and it's a time for us to just take some time and say, thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in my life. Thank you, Lord, for all the many breakthroughs, all the many miracles. Because, see, as I'm talking right now, I'm scanning over this crowd. And as I'm scanning over this crowd, I'm seeing a lot of people that God has done a lot of good stuff in your life. I'm looking over this crowd here, and I know a lot of you. And, and you know, because I know you, I know that you've come out of some stuff and you've gone through some stuff you're really a trophy of God's grace and you're a testament of God's faithfulness. And so it's important that we worship the Lord and that we minister unto the Lord. Several weeks ago, my son Luke came to me and he had been reading his Bible and he said, Dad, what does it mean whenever it says that Samuel ministered unto the Lord? What does that mean in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel when it says Samuel ministered unto the Lord? And I have a book, I believe it's out of print now, but the book is entitled Just Ministering Unto the Lord. And I said, I want you to read this book because I think it's one of the greatest little books about the importance of ministering unto the Lord. But the idea is that in the Old Testament, you had Samuel. And as a young child, he learned to just minister back to the Lord, to worship the Lord, to spend time alone with God, to spend time where we're more focused on him than we are anybody else. And see, where we're at in life is there are a lot of things that are competing for your attention. There are a lot of things that are constantly trying to distract you and a lot of things that are trying to reach out and grab a hold of your focus in life. And it's never been any more so than it is today. Many times, have you ever gone out to lunch with someone and just the whole time you're having lunch with them, the phone is just constantly going off and going off and going off, or maybe you're meeting with someone and and there's just so many interruptions that take place. Well, you can't just say that happens in my natural life, but pastor, that never happens in my spiritual life. No, it does happen in your spiritual life as well. There's times when you decide, I'm going to read the word, I'm going to, I'm going to study the Bible. And as you're reading the Bible, what happens? All of a sudden an email came in or or this alert came in or all of a sudden there was a distraction that happened or there was something that came up that diverted my attention away from what I really needed to be doing. So this morning, I'm gonna take a little time and I'm gonna talk about ministering unto the Lord. And then we're not just gonna talk about ministering unto the Lord. We're actually gonna spend some time where we just continue what we were doing earlier this morning. And that is that we're just gonna lift up our voice, lift up our hands, lift up our praise. What happens whenever we minister unto the Lord? In Acts chapter 13, you read the story about whenever the apostle Paul was released of the Lord into a ministry that God had called him to. Though Paul had walked with the Lord for many years, there came a turning point in his ministry when the Lord released him to focus on a calling in his life. In Acts chapter 13, in verse number 2, 
It says, and while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and they sent them off. But I want you to notice the phrase, as they worship the Lord. Now, other translations will say this, as they ministered unto the Lord, the Lord spoke. Many times as we are in a place where we are ministering unto the Lord, as we are worshiping the Lord, the Holy Spirit will interrupt that and he'll speak to us and he'll give illumination to our mind. He'll give direction to our lives. And all of a sudden God can download within a couple of seconds information to you, direction, insight, revelation can come to you that fast and it can give you direction and really set your whole life in a different direction. So we're living in a day where it's never been more imperative that we spend time worshiping the Lord, but yet yet we're also living in a day when there's never been more distractions and more things that want to hinder you from worshiping the Lord. Unfortunately, many times people come to church and their first question when they get there is, when is this going to be over? How long do we have before this is over? Well, you know, if Sharon and I went out on a date together and we sat down and had dinner and the waiter, you know, brought the menus and I sat down and I looked at Sharon and I said, Sharon, when's this date going to be over? <laughs> you know, when's the, when are we going to wrap this up? You know, how many know that would not work real well? Would you agree with that? Or how would you think as a, as a parent, if you spent time with your child and, and your child looked at you and said, hey, when are we going to finish this up? When are we going to wrap this up? Well, see, that right there tells you they're really not that interested. Their, their heart's really not in it. They're just going through the motions. Now, I understand certainly churches, um, you know, God understands that church shouldn't go on forever indefinitely, but there are times that I think we're rushing the Holy Spirit. We're rushing what God is wanting to do instead of just relaxing. And we need to just relax and enjoy the presence of God. So you're living in a day, I'm living in a day where I need to be in the presence of God because it's only when I've been in the presence of God that I can help other people. Now, my personality is, you know, kind of mediocre and average. And so just me trying to help somebody from a human level or from a personal level, though my heart is sincere and I want to help people, it's, you can only take them so far. But you see, if you can take people and you can introduce them to the presence of the Holy Spirit, if you can bring them into the presence of God, in the presence of God, the Bible says it is the anointing that will destroy the yoke. It is the anointing, it is the Holy Spirit's presence that will destroy bondage off people's lives. So today, we need to take time and we need to minister unto the Lord. Now, what happens when you minister unto the Lord? Well, a number of things happen. Number one, you're more God-focused than you are other people-focused. You know, I say this so often. If you're really going to be a worshiper, you got to take all the cool off. Oh, I don't know if that looks real cool for me to lift my hands, Pastor. Well, that's not the goal this morning. The goal is not trying to look cool. The goal is really trying to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. So when that, why, what happens when you worship the Lord? When you worship the Lord, you've got to forget about everybody else. You've got to forget about distractions. You've got to forget about tomorrow. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow can worry about itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Here's what happens. Whenever you minister to God in the now, God starts taking care of tomorrow. God starts going into your future. God starts ministering in things that are beyond your ability to touch or to control. So in order to minister unto the Lord, number one, you're going to have to relax, take some time. Number two, you're going to have to forget about other things, other distractions, other people. Another thing about ministering unto the Lord, you've got to remember who you're talking to. You're talking to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You got to remember, you're talking about the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
You're talking about El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, the God who is the great and mighty God. I heard about this one private that got called into the general's office, and he got called into this general's office, and and, and the phone starts ringing. And yeah, if you got a phone, you think, well, I'm going to take this call. And the general said, I want to tell you right now, whoever's on that phone is not more important than I am right now. Do you understand there's really nobody more important that I talk to every day than the Lord? You say, well, I got to take care of my family. I'll promise you this. If you'll take care of this relationship with the Lord, you'll be a better husband. You'll be a better father. You'll be a better employee. You'll be a better son to your aging parents. You'll be a better person in every area of your life whenever you've got this relationship taken care of. See, I'm a better husband when I've been in the presence of God. Sometimes Sharon wants me to go ahead and tell me to get back in the presence of God, right? (laughs) I'm a better dad when I've been in the presence of God. I'll just put it this way. I'm a better person when I've been in the presence of God. And so today, all of us across this room, every one of us, you've got things to be thankful for. God has intervened in your life. I'm not talking about what he did 14 years ago. I'm talking about what he's done in the last 14 days in your life. I'm talking about what the Lord has done in the last three or four months of your life, what the Lord has done in already this year in your life. All of us need to take some time and remember, we're talking to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who created the universe. Lord, I'm talking to you today. And guess what? He knows what things we have need of before we ask him. I talk to the Lord. And here's the beautiful thing about my God. He talks back. And I'm not talking about kooky hearing voices. I'm talking about my sheep. Jesus said in John 10, they know my voice. The word know is to recognize. We recognize the voice of God. He re- I recognize the Holy Spirit. Why why do we do? This is not like some lopsided relationship. Whenever Jacob had a revelation of God at Bethel, the thing that Jacob saw was Jacob saw angels that were going up to heaven. You know, most of the church across the world, or particularly the United States, they have no issue with the idea that the angels were going up into heaven. It's a picture of God, our prayers going up into heaven, that there is a connection this way from man to God. But can I remind you, that's only part of the vision. The other part of the vision that Jacob had, he saw the angels coming back down from heaven. That there wasn't just prayers going up to God, but no, there's a, there's a revelation. There's a release from heaven. There is an intera- interaction between heaven and earth. So today, well, what, what do we need to do? God's been good to you. I'm just going to ask you a question. Has God been good to you? Thanks for joining me for today's broadcast. Remember, now as never before, Christians need to spend time in the presence of God. It is important that we take time to minister unto the Lord. As we minister to the Lord with our worship, we will focus upon Him rather than the problems of life. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.